my name is Lynette Rice. I'm the West Coast uh, News Editor at Entertainment Weekly. Uh, I've been there since 1999. And um, it's extraordinary how much the business has changed, especially when it comes to social media. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we've had to embrace at EW, not only with building our website, but getting our information out, because the regular normal, if you call them, uh, pop culture consumer is really active in social media, be it Facebook or Twitter and now Instagram and good Lord, I can't keep up with them all. Uh, but, you know, it's become an extension of what we do on our website and then all individually at EW, it's what we all do personally to get our stories out uh, uh, and to get information out, frankly. It's funny, I, at EW, many of us have our own Twitter accounts, and so it's like a little competition, too, to see how many followers we have. And frankly, at EW, a lot of these writers develop followings, uh, especially given what they write about. So, for example, one of our writers, Jeff Jensen, is huge in writing about uh, you know, genre TV shows, genre movies, you know, like Batman, Spider-Man, that sort of thing. And so, and of course, his the biggest beat he covered was Lost. And so because of that, he's generated such a huge following, and as a result, has generated a ton of Twitter followers. Uh, but it, it's, it's funny, his tweets usually just tend to be his own personal observations about stuff. When I tweet, I my primary goal is to tweet whatever I post online at EW.com and to get that out. Uh, I, I won't always tweet my personal observation about something. Uh, I do have a lot of journalism colleagues that uh, do that. I don't really think that followers want to know how I feel personally about something. Um, if I have a piece of news, I think they want to hear that. I don't think they care if, you know, how I feel about the Tomcat divorce. Right. Have you ever broken news on Twitter before, before EW.com? No, our, um, that would be cannibalizing what we do. And the other thing um, about Twitter that's funny is that all journalists follow each other. So we have to make sure, you know, that's a way to keep up what everybody else is doing. So you don't want to put it on Twitter before you break it on your website to let all those schlubs, you know, break it as well. And that's a danger uh, because some journalists have done that. We're tipped off and then we immediately go write about it. So the goal is to, you know, put it online first, hook your, my WordPress account up to Twitter. And so every time I post, it immediately goes on my, on my Twitter feed and it gets it out there. Um, and that's good. I mean, and you can you can definitely tell by how many tweets for a journalist how much they go off on just about everything, and you'll see just thousands. Whereas mine, I think, is still under 500. I don't. I mean, I just I only tweet headlines, and you know, maybe occasionally um, because the, the beauty of my iPhone, I will tweet a you know a picture of something. You know, we get a lot of crazy mailers. Uh, from studios and said, maybe I'll tweet up, you know, look at this packaging, how much they spent on marketing this show. It's kind of ridiculous. Saw your boss tweet. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's funny, too, because all the studios follow all the journalists, so the minute you tweet something, you hear from them, sure enough, you know, I tweeted something about boss, and they, they reached out to me defensively about what I made fun of, and I made fun of the way they spelled judgment, they spelled it the English version, and they got really defensive, they said, well, our, our copywriter is English, it's like, whatever, it was a joke, but they pay attention to everything we say, even though maybe, you know, we only have five, 10,000, 15,000 followers, nothing compared to other t uh, Twitter feeds, I mean, EW, we have over two, two million, but, you know, the audience I have is very concentrated, but the studios pay attention to everything that we write. grown what we do online about Comic-Con, you know, in addition to covering all the panels, especially all the big panels, you know, we've got video teams going out, and, you know, in some cases we, we're going with uh, actors, and they go out and interact with the Comic-Con crowd, sometimes we'll just go out and shoot pictures of all the crazy characters, in some cases we'll bring those characters back into our photo booth, and they'll be standing there right alongside Kate Beckinsale waiting to get their picture taken by our photographer, and we run those pictures online. You know, the goal is to 
encourage all those folks who are here um, to go to us. But if not, this can be for the folks back home who didn't score that ticket to feel like they were there. And the, so the amount of content that we put up grows each year, just it's a ton. And as a result, our traffic is up substantially, which is very nice. Cool. So you're going to be moderating the uh, highly anticipated Sons of Anarchy. Highly anticipated. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about what you're, you know, how you're going to be organizing the panel tomorrow, and uh, you know what people should pay attention to. Well, I'm excited about moderating it in the Sons of Anarchy because it's the first time the show has been staged in Hall H, and in fact, more and more TV shows, more dramas. Uh, are going into that room, which is, it really speaks to the popularity of these shows at Comic-Con, that they can pack that room, and they are expecting quite a turnout in Hall H for, for Sounds of Vacuum, which is awesome. Um, the bad news is that there's going to be 10 people on the panel, and so as a moderator, that's a real drag man, because you've got to try to ask a question of every one of them uh, to make them feel at home, among, what, 6,000 people. Uh, but the good news is that I'll definitely open it up to the crowd and you know they'll ask questions as well so that takes a little pressure off um, but what's great about moderating panels at Comic-Con is that this is not really an angry crowd you know although they'll let you know if something is a little lame like for example I guess they screened Beauty and the Beast the new CW drama and they were laughing at the pilot not in a great way because it is a little silly uh, but otherwise, they're they're very happy. They're very hospitable. They love the idea of seeing stuff that nobody else on Earth has seen yet. And so, they're generally in a good mood. I, I think a great example of that is when they were showing the clips from Cowboys and Aliens last year, and everybody, you know, the studio came out thinking, "Oh my God, this would be a great movie." Well, the rest is history. You know, it didn't do well. So, you can just say to a crowd at Comic Con. You know, let's give them a round of applause. Let's make them feel at home, and then this the place erupts. So it, it makes moderating a lot easier and a lot more fun too. So, so the creator of Sons of Anarchy, Kurt Sutter, is really big. Um, it's a big following on Twitter. He's very engaged. Or, you know, what are your thoughts on his personal presence on social media? Um, as a journalist, it's fun to have somebody like Kurt on Twitter uh, because it's like Insta stories that we can write online and, and when somebody like him goes off uh, it's just golden because uh, he doesn't hold anything back. He's really critical of his peers, other writers, when they do something wrong. He's also very critical of uh, conglomerates like right now the whole brouhaha between you know, DirecTV uh, and Viacom. He's weighed in on that. He's weighed in with on you know, the, the dish situation with AMC and you know those blackouts. You know, he's C word to describe conglomerates. I mean it works with you know any entity with them, a person a business, they can be called the C-word. Uh, it's colorful and it makes following him a lot of fun, especially for fans. Uh, but he also, the great thing about that, I mean, in addition to just going off on anything, he also teases a lot about his show. And he's also great that he, um, um, he'll he also tweet stories about his show, too. So any one of us that write about his show, he'll take it out to his followers. And I think he's well over 20,000 at this point, which is not bad. Uh, so a lot more showrunners are doing that. I mean, there's definitely still uh, showrunners out there that won't go to it, like Alan Ball from True Blood, for example. He has no interest in doing it, um, which is too bad, because I think a lot of True Blood fans are really big into social media, and you can get so much more out there. Uh, and I think they'd want to hear what was going on in you know, Alan's mind while he's creating the show. But, I mean, Jesus, that's a lot to ask of a showrunner to like. And it, okay, now that you've written your show, you now go online and tweet about it. I, I, I'm sure it, the idea of it seems like a drag. I think you just got to get into the into the rhythm of it, and then you'll find that you know you're at, at two o'clock in the morning, like Ellen Barkin, and you're like popping off. Right. And so, who do you follow on Twitter? Who, who to you know look for stories besides Kurt? Is that something that's a big focus of how you're looking for news now? Um, it's uh, I follow whatever showrunner is um, on Twitter. I'll follow them, like Shonda Rhimes, for example. Uh, she tweets a lot, uh, and in fact, we've gotten stories off of her tweets as well. She tweeted about uh, the new ABC Family uh, drama Bunheads and how you know, there were not you know, black kids in it, and her, her daughter watches the show. 
and that became a story to the point that Amy Palladino you know, responded to it during interviews. Uh, so uh, you know, I follow her. Any any kind of writer that's on a show, I'll follow them. You know, a lot of the um, you know the Daily Show. Uh, I think Rob Burnett has a you know, Twitter feed now. Um, I mean, I was one of the original followers of Conan O'Brien. Doesn't seem like he tweets as much. It gets a little silly. But I mostly tweet on, uh, follow them on Twitter, not just to have a good laugh, but just hopefully you hear if they say something newsworthy. Uh, and the other thing too is what we found is that the networks. Uh, will tweet a headline rather than sending out a press release via email. So we find things out via Twitter. So we really got to be on our toes to watch that stuff. Um, and they don't even let us know that they just tweeted it. We just have to like make sure we go find it. Because then you'll start to see it pop up in other people's stories. So it's a really quick way to get out a press release for them. Uh, so I mean, it's, just, it's, it's kind of like the new AP news feed. Right. Which is amazing, and um, um, we just have to remember to look at it. I mean, it's a little, you know, troublesome because you really got to scroll through and find stuff too. Because um, there's a lot of just like, it's a great day. I mean, there's still a lot of that crap too, right. especially with actors too. Actors don't always um, um, tweet good stuff, but you know, around the time that something major is happening, like all the crap with Idol, remember? who's coming and who's going and Paula Abdul was tweeting about what happened to her and when you can't get Paula Abdul to talk at least we can get her quote from Twitter about how she feels about the negotiations and we all ran that which was very helpful and so I think a lot of actors are also finding that is a very convenient way to get their, their message out right. which is nice. Well for reporters like us we always want spoilers. Right. And we want to, can you just tease the new season? Yeah. Um, that's not always um, wanted by fans. They don't really want to be, to be spoiled. Uh, but they, I, uh, so we'll play along and ask them, you know, don't give away too much, but, you know, where are things going to pick up? Like, you're going to pick up, like, you know, um, Clay is just leaving the hospital. Or, you, know, you know, where are things going to go there? Um, and then just, you know, his mindset on, on that finale and how he put it all together, that sort of thing. And then, you know, you ask about, you know, you've got two more seasons, that sort of thing. Um, Are you going to ask Kurt about his tweeting? I'll ask him about his tweeting. And cool. it's funny because he also, he has a love-hate relationship with it as well. Because he also, I think he hates it when we all write stories about it. And yet he still does it. It's like, dude, you can't have it both ways. But he has gotten angry via Twitter when people make headlines out of his tweets. So, but I think at the same time, he does it because he likes the attention. Um, and he's good at generating attention. He's really good. I wish more showrunners were like him. We would all really like it yeah. if, they, if they were. That's good to know. And I, so you don't see it as kind of like maybe competing with EW News if you see all these people just going straight onto the internet? Do you, do you, do you see W maybe as more of a kind of curator of news instead of... Um, I mean, do you think, um, are you saying that is I guess Twitter it, a potential co competition? Yeah, uh, I guess, right. Is, is Twitter or other social media potential competition? Um, I think for the internet savvy um, out there, you there could be, it, Twitter could be seen as potential competition for for eyeballs, people wanting, you know, entertainment news fast. The thing is, is that it takes a lot of patience to get through Twitter, whereas somebody like EW, a, a publication like EW can be the clearinghouse. You can find, you know, we'll sift out what's most important, what we think that you should follow. And that's always been our, our mission at EW. This is the cool things in pop culture that we think you should be paying attention to. And you're a knucklehead if you're not. You know, these are the cool things. And so, um, I think that you need some place like that because who has the time to go through Twitter? Uh, and, and you know, I mean, just who has the time? Yep. Who has the time? Right. And we never see everything that's out there too. So, but as a as a, it's definitely a great place to go to help with our coverage. Uh, I, I don't know what we would do without it. It's 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 amazing 
that I was even able to earn a living as a journalist before social media. <laughs> Where did I get my news? I actually had to ask somebody a question. Now I never even have to leave my office. <laughs> <laughs> so speak, going more technology, one, one last question. So I read a lot of the time, especially when I'm on the go and I'm not home to get my publication, the iPad app. And I guess, do you see tablet apps like EW's tablet app? Do you think your news is being consumed differently than it was in print or online? Like, do you, I don't know, what are your thoughts on, I guess? Well, we really hope that people yeah. use uh, the tablets to consume our publications because we're, you know, we're putting our eggs in that basket. You know, we've, we're making all of our, our titles available via the tablet. Uh, and EW is well received on the tablet. It looks great. And if, it, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, it's a better interactive experience than just picking up one of our magazines. Because, I mean, you can just turn pages and you can touch links to go see trailers and, and hear songs and whatnot. Things you just can't do if you're holding a piece of paper. Right. Um, I hope it doesn't all go that way because I think people still like to hold a magazine. I still like to hold a book. I don't want to hold a Kindle, I want to hold a book. Uh, but it's definitely something that we want to stick with. Uh, and I just think it, it I think it'll, uh, it will help us stay around. And I think it makes, it helps people get even more into pop culture, having, you know, those additional features that the tablet can offer. I mean, it, I, I think the people who get it are, you know, really big connoisseurs of pop culture. You know, and we love those people. We wish more people were like them. You know, I, I don't want them to be like my mom and dad that spend all five minutes reading about entertainment and then they go to the news page. I mean, we want people who want to know more.